and welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube watching this video later on for some teamer mid range that we're going to go ahead and go play over in ranked today. So this deck is a deck that's kind of built around two cards, uh, Bioessence Hydra, which is a five mana four, four trampler that uh, gets a counter on it for each loyalty counter on uh, planeswalkers you control. And whenever you play new Planeswalkers, however much loyalty they have, you get the Bioessence Hydra gets that many counters as well. So we have this huge card here. And then also Kiora, where Kiora works incredibly well with Bioessence Hydra, but then we also want four power or greater creatures. So that's where we have like Bone Crusher Giant, which says it's a three drop, but really it's a two drop. Uh, you know, it's, it's two mana shock. But then you can replay for uh, Bone Crusher Giant for Kiora there. And then we also have Questing Beast, which also triggers Kiora. So there's a couple of new cards triggering Kiora. Now, as far as Bioessence and Hydra, since we want Planeswalkers, Throne of Eldraine has a couple of really good three-mana Planeswalkers that start with tons of loyalty. We have the Royal Scions. They can help us out. And Oko, Thief of Crowns. Both of these cards are really good. And so two great three three mana walkers to go with Bioessence and Sidra. This card kind of has to, or sorry, this deck has like too many cards that I want to play. You know, like I want to play like four mana Vivian in here and I wouldn't mind playing a Tamiyo and I want another Domri Anarch of Bolos. There's like too many good Planeswalkers here. Um, maybe, maybe there's a team or Planeswalker deck <clears throat> with more, just focus more on Planeswalkers and Sarkin and you move away from Spellbreaker, Questing Beast, Bone Crusher, Giant, Kiora, Bioessence and Sidra, like that kind of stuff. There could be a team or a planeswalker deck there, but we're kind of mixing the two together. We got four power or greater creatures and planeswalkers living in harmony here. Um, so yeah, let's let's give this a try. My my sideboard is is a, is a little bit of nonsense right now, but that's kind of where we're at. You know, like day one of the format. Well, this is day two, but still, you know, like right away in the format is kind of having a little bit of of nonsense in our sideboard that will get more tuned whenever we start uh playing against other decks and and really seeing what we need help in yeah so we just got the combination so we're going with the combination of good planeswalkers haste creatures spellbreaker questing beast have haste domri ticks up to give our creatures haste so we can give bio essence hydra hydro crisis bone crusher giant give those things haste and uh try to grind our opponent down and we got big time card advantage with crisis as well so let's give this deck a try. Let's see how it does. <clears throat> yeah, there is no good sweeper in the team or colors. Need some water. Oh, no, no, no. I don't want to play that deck. Please cancel. Please cancel. Wrong deck. Okay, here we go. Correct deck. Uh yeah, green. I mean, green looks to be the best color in standard, especially, especially right away, where um, being being a reactive deck is harder immediately. Whenever everybody's trying a bunch of random stuff out, it's harder to be a reactive deck. So it's it's easier to be a proactive deck, and that's what the green cards are are proactives. Um. Anyway, what's your opinion on the new Esper Doom deck? It looks pretty good. I've only played against it one time. But it looked good that that one time there. I have not played around with Oko Dreadhorde Invasion um, yet. I'm not super sold on it because basically because I'm not sold that Dreadhorde Invasion is strong enough when you don't have Oko. Um, obviously, the two together are awesome, but Oko is just awesome. So I'm not sold that you actually need Dreadhorde Invasion. Well, this isn't isn't good that we haven't found land yet. Hopefully, we start finding some lands. Not good at all. Because yeah, I was on the draw with two lander. Yeah. Wish I obviously I wish I mulligan now. 
I really wish I mulligan, but I didn't know my top three cards. We're going to have zero lands in the top three. Hurts. So now Paradise Druid can die to removal, and then we're dead. I can't just sit back and not play things, though. Sorry, I'm late. That's not as bad, because we can just replay Paradise Druid, because we weren't going to be able to play anything else next turn anyway. It would have been a lot worse if it was like Othakaya. That was the reason why I went 4-4 four, four Spellbreaker, because of Othakaya. So yeah, like that works out just fine. That is yeah, those... Yeah, Oko, Goose, and Questing Beast are worth crafting. Yeah, those are... Those are very good cards, and they're not... They're not going to be bad in two months. Like, they're they're good. <laughs> Thanks, Papa. Yeah, we ended the stream last night at rank 8, and so getting up today, I guess we moved down three spots to 11. But we're still playing our brews here. <laughs> I I was told that they're... That that uh, the goose noise may change that they're that they're hopefully working on uh, changing that from an eagle noise to a goose noise a lot of people have kind of asked about that I've wanted that So playing this, <clears throat> playing this means we don't have to tap the Paradise Druid. You know, they haven't really shown they have removal for Paradise Druid. You never know. They could have found some. Uh, you get set down, I think, two levels. Like, if you're in Mythic, you go down to Platinum, platinum 4. Like everybody in Mythic, it doesn't matter, like, where you're at in Mythic. And so, like, everybody in... The diamond goes down to gold, and so on. Every single month, you can qualify for an MCQ. Every single month. This is such a tough block. These two cards that I have are so good, but looting for my opponent is also so good for them. I think Bioessence Insider is better than Questing Beast. Like when they're both just on the battlefield. Because Hydra has the potential. To be incredibly big. Like next turn, next turn will be a 10-10. For example, we play this. Make a food token, it's a 10-10. That's a bad auto tap. Oh, doesn't matter. So like if they left the, the blue white blue white like that, it's probably 
probably means they have a Dovin's Veto, to be honest. I think they have a Dovin's Veto. I'd rather them coil or I'd rather them counter coil than counter Oko. Revel with your king, wild and sovereign and free. Hmm. I don't want to turn their hero just into a 3 3. Nah, we'll just make it 2 2. Or we'll, or just, we'll just go up Surely 2 here. Must be famished. That's 15 trample damage. They have to jump block with like all their stuff just to stay alive. Our guy doesn't want me to see the chat. He's sitting right in front of me, so I can't see the chat. So no, this Hydra doesn't have death. It, this has trample. I honestly don't think I really want to change very much at all. I don't really love Negate or Veil of Summer because of Teferi. I kind of want to just play this Agent of Treachery. But I, I think I want to keep the Lava Coils in, honestly. Like, they're playing Seraph and, and the 1-3. I'm just gonna keep it the same. I I know I don't have blue mana here, but it's a reasonable hand. I don't like mulliganing against a thought erasure deck. <clears throat> Where they're like Thought Erasure just reduces the resources that both players have, so I don't want to be down a resource against that immediately. So I'll keep a little bit looser hands against the Thought Erasure deck. Especially hands like where we have land drops. We have the Domri Hydra combo here. You know, things are about to get real rowdy. So we can give Hydra haste and basically kill our opponent. Oh, I mean, I guess it'll just be a 9 9. You're going to hurt when this is through. Basically, kill our opponent. It does. It gains counters when you play the Planeswalker, also. So if I play Nissa, Nissa has five. You plus one. It's six. It, this gains six counters, so it goes to fifteen. So this would be a fifteen, fifteen next turn. You know, like 
So yeah, they had to have removal for it, of course. <laughs> Yeah, we need to use Paradise Druid for blue there. Oh, what? Can't finish your job. So the problem with playing Sarkin and making a blocker with Sarkin is that if they have, like, Teferi to bounce the token, it's kind of a nightmare. So I think I just go Nyssa. Oh, you're gonna hurt when this is through. Yeah. I will protect the virtue of this world. Behold, nature's true power. I guess I could have gone... Could have played Spellbreaker as a 4-4 also. If I would have just, if I would have ticked up on the, you know, like one of these and shocked in, I could have gone like one of the double lands. Could have played Spellbreaker as a 4-4. Maybe I should have done that. What was the Simic Ramp deck from yesterday? Um, you can, you, if you want like to find the, the deck list that link that's right above your comment like immediately above your comment you can uh that link there gets you to the, all the decks you can also find the video on the youtube channel that has the deck list in there as well yeah we could have had spellbreaker with double riot if we shocked if we would have ticked up on one of these shocked we could have, yeah if we were or if we were shocked in played nissa and then ticked up. We could have double right. So it could have been a 4-4 four, four haste. So yeah, so I could have attacked with a 4-4 four, four haste instead of the 3-3. Three, three. Like so they did have Teferi. So I'm really glad we didn't play Sarkin last turn. Thanks, Mato. Matu Mania. Thank no, you. No, put me back in. my elemental friend. Questing Beast, pretty nice. Hardly my worst defeat. Get to attack them and keep the pressure going and still take the Teferi out of here. There's nothing bad about the card. They're in trouble. They're in a lot of trouble. We moved up one spot. That's lame. I was at eight yesterday and I just win a match and now we're at 10. <laughs> That's lame. Yeah, Questing Beast is a statement about Power Creep for sure. Dang, that card is strong. Yeah, we top 10. Let's go. 
Or we're just playing some fun brews also. I'm beaten down with BioS and Hydra here in the top 10. Do you think there's a framework for an archetype, an artifact type brew? Uh, we actually just kind of, yeah, like if you watch like the end of that video with the Demir artifacts, we talk about a whole lot of cards that could work in an artifact type deck at the end of that one. It's, it's up on YouTube right now already. Um, but yeah, we didn't do too well with our deck there, but we you know had a good discussion about artifact stuff. <laughs> if I change my stream title to add top 10, I'll get more viewers. Ooh. Eh, we'll see. More Just Guy stuff. I feel like I want the Kiora in play to draw cards. I kind of want to play the Temple also, but then that means that my Paradise Druid can get shocked if I do that. So maybe we don't play Temple. Octopuses, serpents. Oh, I love them all. I guess I could play another Paradise Druid. Doesn't really seem like they have Clarion. I mean, maybe they have Clarion and they just don't want to use it on one Druid. Hopefully not. Ah, uh, the Fires of Invention. Good card. Nature flows with vigor. Witness the ties that bind us all. Harness the elements. That was probably just a really bad idea. Doing the stomping ground. I did that for Bone Crusher Giant, but I guess I don't have any other red sources, so if they do have Clarion or just a sweeper. That was probably really bad. I just put a red source down to the bottom too, that steam vents. We'll see if we get punished. I kind of want to wait on Questing Beast till they have a Planeswalker. <clears throat> That's a bad sign for me. Go get a Sweeper. Oh, they just have Elder Spell on their sideboard. Why not? What know you of dragons? I guess I shouldn't play the Planeswalker. Into Elder Spell.
Hmm. I just want to anyway. Just kill that thing. The ocean surges, life thrives. The land fights for us. So yeah, they can, they Elder Spell, then they only get to play one other spell. Really hope it's not a Sweeper. It's just a 1-4, we can kind of deal with that. The Jeskai, play, the Jeskai deck playing Elder Spell is pretty rough. Oh my gosh, it is a Sweeper. Oh, that's really bad. Well... And drew a land. That was really rough. They just had a sweep or two. Come on, questing beast. Uh, gain that life. My prowess is unmatched by my feet. I have just the trick for this. Why can't they just have two more lands in hand? Ugh. Feel the heat of my flames. <laughs> Magnificent. Well, this could be over. Fires of Invention. Without that, with this mana base, they couldn't cast, like, eh, just a couple of these. Like, they weren't going to be able to cast Time Wipe or Elder Spell. Hone your prowess. Uh, Fires of Invention, you don't need to tap your mana to cast spells. You can you can only cast two spells a turn. To the sky. This looks like game. Yeah, I played against somebody playing Lavinia yesterday. We played against like an, a blue white hate bears deck with Lavinias. My opponent putting Elder Spell on their sideboard was pretty smart. Should make the food token and sacrifice it before damage, because otherwise, if I just wait till end of turn to do this, they could have a shock. They could shock in response to kill me. I need to find a 
I need to find a way to get this dragon off the battlefield, and then we get to hit them for four and kill Sarkin. And then they don't get to attack with those things anymore. So Goose gained us six life plus blocked. Helped us out there. Yeah, Fire Invention does make Fae of Wishes a whole lot better. Makes the granted part awesome. That is true. I'm guessing they have a Fires of Invention in the sideboard that they can grab with Fae of Wishes also. I'm guessing there's three in the main, one in the board. <clears throat> we thought we had this game, but then they they had time wipe. You know, like that was the card that couldn't really beat a sweeper. They had a sweeper. That was rough. Definitely don't want Domri. Want those. Just brought in a six and a seven, so I need to cut down on the top end of my curve. Plus, we brought in a bunch of fours. So I'm going to take out some bio essence hydras. Let's play those also. Maybe we should take Sarkin out. Sarkin's really bad about against three mana to fairy. Well, the minus is at least. I guess the plus isn't. Okay, here we go. No, yeah, no, you cannot override the fire stacks. You don't get to play stuff on your opponent's turn, even with the fairy in play. Anything that says that you can't do something overrides things that say that say you normally can do something. Can't. Can't trumps can. Yeah, no fun trumps fun. There you go. So five mana next turn. Five mana is not a great mana number for Krasis. Ideally, we'll draw something else to do here, like a Planeswalker. And then next, ideally, hopefully they don't kill my two mana creatures. Terrible land for us to see because of Clarion. Ugh.
Don't really need a second blue down. I was thinking if I wanted to play the steam vents. Uh, this was just a sleeve that I bought in the store. I think it would just cost like gold. Well, it's, they have their best card. So they had their best possible turn last turn with Clarion, and now their best card with Fires of Invention. So it looks pretty bleak for us here now. We'll see. Oh, it's not in the store anymore. All right, we got a, bunch, got a bunch of haste creatures we're drawn into. Wouldn't mind drawing a land here. Get to create this for four. Kind of have like the perfect card every single turn. Just a, a perfect answer to... Uh, shifting Ceratops here as well. Just kind of have the perfect card each turn. Unfortunately, we didn't hit the land, so I couldn't play the Krasis for four. Things don't go perfectly for us over here. Glad they didn't have Liliana. Imagine Liliana here going minus four and making me sack two creatures. Looks like you weren't fit to survive. That would have been really rough. I can no longer stand by and watch. Here goes nothing. Questing Beast does the damage to one uh, Planeswalker they control. So if I would have played Questing Beast to hit them for four, it would have killed Garrick also. It would have killed Teferi, kind of just like this. Yeah, the, yeah it looks like the, I should be playing Cinder Vines. In the, like, looks like Cinder Vines starts ne needs to be in the sideboard. Um, yeah, my, like I said, my sideboard's kind of nonsense until totally we start seeing more, more stuff. But if... Fires of Invention is going to be pretty popular. Um, yeah, I need to play. I just need to play uh, Cinder Vines. You know, got it. That's the thing about uh, decks like our opponents. It's pretty, you know, like this is a good time to play it right now. You know, like day two when people aren't really ready for, for like Fires of Invention type stuff. 
uh, but it's it's not like you can't adapt. I I don't think Lavinia is a great sideboard card against fires because it dies super, super easily. It's just really easy for them to kill. They don't have to just spend zero mana. It's just they may spend zero mana. So, like, they can just play a shock, you know, just tap a red, shock it, and then it's dead. Like, so that's not a great answer. It's okay. But it's okay while it's out on the battlefield, but it's just too easy to deal with. This is only my second time playing against the Fires of Invention deck. The first one that I played against yesterday wasn't that well put together. This one is better is, is um, better put together, especially with, with like the Fey of Wishes. Oh, I've done the hero thing before. So yeah, my opponent came ready to destroy a whole bunch of creatures and planeswalkers, which was what I'm playing here. I didn't really come ready to destroy a Fires of Invention, and so they had Fires of Invention turn four both games also, which is pretty fortunate for them. And so it looks like we may lose, but we'll see. We have a bunch of haste creatures. All we need, you know, they're at seven. They don't get to play stuff during my turn, of course. So it's not over yet. One of those three cards has to deal with Questing Beast because they they ran out of Fae of Wishes. So maybe they don't have an answer to Questing Beast. Nope, they do. Let's possibly just draw another one. Ever see a volcano erupt in person? You're about to. Let's get toasty. <laughs> so we have four more ceratops requesting beasts Two beasts, two ceratops. Oh, looks like someone's getting a little sweaty. Either of those will give us lethal right now. So we got four of them. We got a little bit, a little bit more than a nine percent chance of drawing those. Royal scions. Let's do this thing. Let's get moving. There's a beast. Oh yeah, and Oko can make that food token be a haster also. Um do I want Oko, though? No. Ugh. 
yeah, Demir Artifact had some holes in everything. We talked about how to, like, some some things that could maybe upgrade the deck afterwards. Yeah, Oko makes 3-3s three into, or yeah, the food's into 3-3s. Three Glad I can help with your not being on fire problem. Darn, that puts him to five. Oh, wait, I got Royal Scions. Right, and I do get to cast Royal Scions because of Kiora. As long as Kiora survives, that is. I will call the dragons. Which, maybe Kiora doesn't survive? Well, they're not worried about, like, Spellbreaker or something like that. Do they cast two spells? I hope so. Are they done casting spells? Cool. Alright, GG's. Thank you for not killing Kiora. I love to make a splash. We've encountered another puzzle on our quest. Embrace your fear and charge. I will consume you. Good old haste creatures. I think Fires of Invention doesn't let you play on your opponent's turn. So we got a bunch of haste, haste, haste. Bunch of haste. Haste. This thing makes haste stuff. That makes haste. Artifacts. Hmm. And with our opponent having, you know, kind of everything they want to have. Here we go. Game three. Hopefully my opponent stumbles this time. Hopefully they don't have Clarion into Fires of Invention. Into Coil Your Ceratops. This is tough. I don't want all these cards. Um, I could just put back Krasis. So we make sure we hit land drops. Which against a deck with sweepers, maybe that's the thing to do. I only have 24 lands in the deck, so it's not like my deck is flushed with lands. This also makes it so I can easier, I can be, I can more confidently put a land to the bottom with a scry. So I want to play Spellbreaker Haste, but the problem with that is Clarion. If I just go Spellbreaker, no haste, or if I go Ceratops, they could just have Coil. So we're kind of in a no-win situation here. So do I want to play against play around Clarion or Coil?
Playing around coil. Just getting the damage in. No fires. No Clarion. Darn it. Dead Clarion. At least they didn't have fires to go along with it. I'm just going to play the Highlands because it doesn't really matter what I draw next turn. I don't really need a scry for anything in particular. I'd rather wait for another draw step to we can kind of see what's going on before I scry. You will feel the lick of my blade. This Arkan's been really annoying. Come to me. It's a green elk? Why can't it be a blue elk? Green and blue elk. Hey, Duriel. Stay back. I'm an explosively good pyromancer. Yeah, it looks like that, that turn three playing Spellbreaker instead of playing a 4-4 has obviously been really bad for me with them having Clarion and then this. It's a tough choice of like what to do there. But obviously with the, the choice I made did not pan out at all. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. You have got to be kidding me, auto tab. <sighs> this is a really frustrating match. That was like three games in a row where the opponent had like the the card that matched up the best against mine. That's frustrating. I, I of course, could have made a, a different decision. With the, the Spellbreaker, you know, it, it ended up... I, I made the wrong decision. That was a tough call. And I made the wrong one. The first time I hovered over the card, yeah, it showed a green that wasn't going to be tapped. And then, uh, but auto tap got me. <sighs> oh well. All right, got our first loss in a while. Bleh. <sighs> Tap land. The regular land out, keep it. Hmm. 
life. This one drop ripples and grows. So another just guy deck, huh? Never mind. Nature blows with vigor. Oh! And mana, please. <laughs> A little pick me up before the real fun begins. All right. Turn Spellbreaker into a questing beast, basically. Draw a card with this Kiora. Yeah, we'll kind of see what's going on over here. So it's, you know, definitely a five-color deck. So this is probably a Fires of Invention deck. Probably? I don't, I don't know. So Kiora lets me draw an extra card. Domri gives my Hydrocrasis haste. We also get to minus three this Domri, though, for extra cards, too. We'll keep the Domri. I feel like we should minus three this while we can. So then I don't get to play Krasis this turn. Um... Thanks, Adriel. Thank you so much. Oh. Yeah, the Simic Ramp was really strong, sensational. Um, if you if you kind of watch like the end the end of the YouTube video, I kind of um, you know I labeled it as like the the best deck. But I kind of poked fun at that a little bit. At the end. Like it's not again. there's not really a, a best deck right now. Like that's that was just it's way too early for a best deck, basically. But with that being said, it was it did look really good. It was impressive. Alright, so that did not work out doing the minus on the Domery. We got the Hydra, but we put a couple other Planeswalkers down here. I know, like, a Royal Scions and something else. And I didn't get to give the Bioessence Hydra haste now. I really want to extend more into the into like a sweeper, but it doesn't really matter if Gilded Goose dies the sweeper too much. It's the most unfair thing that we can be doing in this deck is attacking with a a very large hasted Bioessence Hydra. Like it's not it's not um, out of the realm of possibilities to attack with like on turn five have a like, you know, 1818 Haste, Bioessence, Hydra. We just play, like, Kiora on three, Domri on four, and then Hydra on five. And we can, technically, we could do that all turn two. Okay, yeah, take the Goose. The Goose doesn't do anything. Or, sorry, we can do that earlier. If we, if we go Goose, 
I guess it can't be quite that large, though. It won't be quite as big as 18, because we'd have to use Kiora and stuff, but... One time. So 17. So we could attack for 17 on turn 4 with a Hydra. Uh, the Simic cards look awesome as far as what's been tearing it up so far. Questing Beast, Oko. Cards look really good. Seeing a lot of this Casualties of War card running around. Yeah, it does kind of... Yeah, it looks like a niv -Mizzet deck, doesn't it? All these are... These are all two-color cards. I mean, if they had a sweeper, they would have played it last turn. So they'd have to... They have two draws here for a sweeper. Yay. <laughs> I think I like Veil of Summer here. <clears throat> we saw tons and tons of uh, black targeted spells between Thought Erasures and removal spells and stuff like that. So let's get Veil of Summers. Negates could be good too. What if we cut Goose? So we don't have to draw geese like that later on. I hope I have enough lands. Hope we hit land drops. Ugh. Hate it. I mean, I get. I guess I got like turn two Paradise Druid, then I start holding up Negate with Druid. They have Thought Erasure for Paradise Druid. I'm in a rough spot. I mean, the gates are pretty valuable. I don't know. I guess we'll try it. Hopefully, Drew doesn't get <clears throat> thought or erasured away. Hopefully, we draw lands. I'd love to draw a tap land here. Any tap land. I'll even take rugged high lands. Perfect. Perfect. Darn. What's up? Sin Christ getting the gifted stuff from Cali Commuter. Alright. I was I was thinking like that maybe I could snag a chromatic lantern there. 
But I'll just I'll just play the Paradise Druid here. Have you tried a Sultai mid-range deck after the rotation? Not yet. Nope, not yet. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely get there to Sultai, but haven't gotten there yet. Lunch. Hmm. So I could have attacked with Paradise Druid, then tried to untap it, but if I try to untap it and they kill it in response. That hurts. Yeah, didn't think they had a, something to do, or didn't have a removal spell there, so yeah, actually we're good there. Uh, cannot negate that, unfortunately. Cannot ne negate that, unfortunately. Hmm. All right, well, I guess I should have negated the Dispark. Let's get moving. So I wanted to keep, I didn't negate the Dispar because I wanted to negate more impactful cards like, you know, like whatever Planeswalker or like the, uh, the that Golgari spell, you know, the six mana one. Like the Dispar is just a one for one card and we were already, we were already drawing a card so we were up on it. I thought like that was okay because Shifting Ceratops would still die to like if they had a sweeper kind of thing. So I didn't negate there, but see like that's what I want to negate. Well, this sucks. But I wish I would have because then I could have, you know, been ahead and... Yeah, I wish I would have just negated that now. Um, all right, so Bioessence Hydra is my hope. Can I play this? I can play this, then Hydra, but then I don't have Negate. And then they get to just attack and kill Nessa. Yeah, we need to find another Planeswalker. All right, so note self. Keep the Ceratops alive. That cost me that game. That cost me that game. Don't you hate when you make a decision like that? Do you think you have like a you think it's a good decision that just completely backfires?
and you have you have the cards to win, but you lose because you made a wrong decision. Yeah, it happens. Yeah, that's that's how a lot of formats are like this at the the very very beginning where people are doing magical Christmas land stuff. Um, that's just kind of how it is because it's it's kind of ha hard to have more interaction as we don't know exactly what to interact with. It's the beginning. It's a lot of you know, first couple of weeks. What's up, 619? Happy Friday. Do I get Domrium in play first? I think so. If you think I'm crazy, wait till you see my mates. And done. Everything's in the right place. I'll be back after I've licked my wounds. You'll okay. See. Well, we still got two cards. So that's why I minus right away with the Domri. Can't really take that turn off like they did. You know, if they have time wipe, we get to negate it. We also just have Ceratops for haste. Like, I, I don't know how they're getting out of this. That doesn't get out of it. Teamers two and one. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, I'll open them after after this league. After two more matches. Is that okay? After the league. Hmm. Two land going first. We have a good hand. We need to draw one more land for Oko. You know, we have like these lava coils. Like our hand's good. But we you know we need to draw like a couple more lands though. I think i I'm gonna try keeping. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Kind of rather be on the draw. Obviously, lava, turn two lava coil is a lot better on the draw than on the play. More likely to hit something. All right, Wolfie, can you give me a card? Give me a land. Yeah, Hazda Marshall. 
Thing's not even a knight. That worked out really well. Good job, Wolfie the Fox. This is my fox's name is Wolfie. Now. Got us a scry land. Let's scry to five drop down to the bottom. Every tale about me is absolute nonsense. You turn their one one into a three three. True. Seems like a bad idea. It's not poison. Trust me. Mm hmm. Well, that makes things worse. That's a good raise the alarm. It's a good raise the alarm. All right, we will. No. I'll say we will coil the Tamik. Fine. Remain blind. Let's play that thing. Another Convoke spell? Stop. It's a lot of power out there. Just cost three, to, four to activate. Can I get greedy and play Hydra here first, so that then whenever I play Damra, the Hydra is a, bigger? Or do I have to just play, or do I have to just kill like the Hanged Executioner now? Day. Yeah, I probably shouldn't get greedy. Hey, what's up, Justice? Shout out to the YouTube squad. Ugh. That would have been a perfect card for me to play Bios and Hydra last turn if I knew that they were just going to draw a Hunted Witness. All right, we got a sub goal. Getting towards our next 12 hour stream. Let's mark that one down. Hit a sub goal, thanks everybody. So let's, let's take a look. That's sub goal number 13 out of 20. So we just did the 12 hour stream yesterday, but um, that was for a sub goal we hit last week. So yeah, good attack, good attack. Um, I just have to trade with this Luxodon because 
If I don't, I'm just taking a lot of damage from it. I can't... I can't really attack. Nope. Can't really attack into them with having the two three threes anyway. So basically, I can't just sit there and just take four from that. Yeah, greed would have helped us out quite a bit. Should have been greedy. Played the Hydra. Wow. Need a Planeswalker. I have an Awakened Inferno in the sideboard, not in the main deck. Remember when I kept a two lander and I was like, man, I hope we hit a, a land drop. Four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, or fourteen, fifteen. I have to block with this thing. Alright, so flame sweep, a couple other I don't even know if like the the other one for one removal is really what I want. I, it's probably fine. Venerate Luxodon is such a messed up card. As we saw there that game. I'm having the the Luxodons. Just wrecked us. Puts four four power that trades with Questing Beast into play plus Anthem's the team. Art is really good. This is a tough matchup to, to sideboard for, honestly. I take a Paradise Druids. That's what I'm going to do. Paradise Druid doesn't really trade with anything. Dies to the Flame Sweep. We brought in four extra two mana cards with the four red removal spells, and we brought in the Flame Sweep. Paradise Druid just doesn't block anything. Thanks, 619. Good chance this hand doesn't work out. But there's also a chance it does work out. So we'll we'll see. We'll see. That's definitely going to the bottom. Obviously I'd love to find like flame sweep. 
Uh, need more land. Do not need more five drops. First two cards being five drops. It's like the only thing I don't need are five drops. And four drops. Bet you've never been hugged by a kraken before. Law Rune and Force is really nice. Mm, that means they have a Convoke spell. I don't want to see either Convoke spell. But especially not that. Need to draw flame sweep. No, we'll just keep on. I love to make a splash. Drawing more expensive cards. So yeah, like this this makes all these things like you know two toughness. So for Sarkin. Come on, flame sweep. Uh, time to ebb from battle. Well, I kept a sketchy hand. We did not draw what we needed to with all these five and four mana cards, but could have mulliganed also. Good hand over there. GG, empty, empty everything by turn four. Having 18 power in play, it's pretty good. GG's. I don't have a way to make it not lethal. All right, two and two. play one more try to break the tie Ugh. you know good looking mono white deck there uh as long as you don't run to a sweeper you know like that deck is like just one sweeper they're dead kind of thing as we saw there but no sweeper uh teamer has ramp cards and tamio that's what it has and that Grixis doesn't have for Fire of Invention. Tamio in particular is just like a perfect card to go along with Fire of Invention. What decks could you look into for a budget deck? Uh, I mean, really just like the, the Cavalcade. Um, that's a that's a good one like that you just that you just mentioned. That's probably the best one, honestly. It's it's really hard to say right now of like of like budget decks right now because we we don't there's not really like just established decks right now. 
it's the second day that that in, there's been a new format. There's not like established decks really. We're all just kind of playing some nonsense and and seeing what happens and just seeing like card interactions and stuff like that. All right, well, I like drawing the Paradise Druid here. We played against Esper Hero earlier and won, but being on the play with turn two Hero is always nice. I'm not sure if this is Esper or not. I guess. Maybe it's not. Yeah, I will take... I will take getting Heroes out of here because of how they can just represent so many creatures. You know, if that really slows me down. Abzan. Abzan. So I could have used Roll of Silence to try to look for land drops also. But I like how Domri can just add mana for me. You know, it's basically a land drop. <laughs> no. Oh, Verasco is so good. I wonder if this is just my Abzan hero deck from yesterday. I've suffered worse. It's possible. Sure, it looks like it. I don't really want to discard these cards. You know, if I play Royal Scions and Loot, there's some good cards we have in hand. And while we got other things to play, might as well just play the other things. Hmm. Opponent not playing a land drop is ominous. Probably some Desparks here. Probably a Despark here. <laughs> Thanks for so nice. Yeah, this this has in here deck is pretty great. What do you think about Oko replacing three mana Chandra in your five color Gates deck? You played a few months back. Um, I don't remember the deck exactly, but I think. Oko probably works better because I don't imagine you have too many spells to flash back. Alright, we'll just get a, a questing beast out of here. No to spark. Yeah, I thought it'd be better to dispark a beast over the Domri. Whenever we have a backup beast, they're legendary. <clears throat> the Domri was a better play against Garrick, though, because Garrick can minus three kind of music. to kill beast. We were born for the hunt. Courage is the greatest virtue. I was acknowledged. Fear is a tool. Use it. 
curse is affecting me more than I thought. All right, that went well. Yeah, if they would have minused for Garrick, then Spellbreaker would have killed Garrick. Oh, yeah, I just forgot about questing that other part with questing beast there for a second. Darn it. Yeah, you're y'all are right. Y'all are right. Y'all are right. I should have attacked them, and the, I forgot about that questing beast part. <laughs> All right. We're still, you know, it's still just the second day playing the cards. That's the first time I've done that. I've always hit them before. It's the first time I've done that. I've been just a little off today with us streaming the 12 hours yesterday. Just in general. Alright, I'll attack. Ratar. Ratter. I'll attack my opponent this time. Yeah, Royal Scion's looking pretty nice. Questing Beast has First Strike, Trample, Vigilance, Death Touch, Haste. It's a 6-4. So even if they want to block with Kethys, they still take 5. So only does 1 to Kethys, then Trample over. It's First Strike. First Strike, Trample, Death Touch. I'll try my luck elsewhere. Just has... All the words on the card ever. All of the words. Yeah, Royal Science is pretty sweet. So much loyalty. Uh, thanks, Boswell. Like, this is just unblock. Like, my opponent can't possibly block Questing Beast at all. You know, first Strike, Trample, Death Touch. We need the Trample Heart. Just First Strike, Death Touch. Can't block. Then it also has Trample, so it's like, why am I blocking anyway? Next up, there are some things that cannot. No. But scions and their royalness. Valid strategy. All right. Well, now they can definitely block. Well, that was a great turn for them. And yeah, this looks like this is just my deck. So that's pretty cool. It's like, I would rather have Domri in play for Hydra, but if I play Domri here, they can just attack these four creatures at Domri and kill Domri. Sometimes sacrifice is necessary. That is nice being able to scribe before draw there. I have not played Chandra Tribal yet. Yeah, I haven't played it yet. I don't know. Yeah, Doom Whisper is just really strong. It's an underrated card. It was probably going to die anyway.
Yeah, we got stuck. We got stuck on mana pretty pretty bad here this game. We've gone through 19 cards just our four lands. Two damage. Do you, why Doom Whisper? Do you not see Doom Whisper just killing me? Why would you not play a five mana six six flying trampler that also sets up your draw steps? Yeah, there's Citadel in the deck. There's Soren, there's Kethis, there's things to do with your graveyard. That Kethis was awesome bringing back the Vraska to kill my Royal Scions. And Kethis got me. Well, I played Oko one in one game, and it was immediately Conclave Tribunaled. I think. I think that was like the only game we played this card. I know, like, I had four to Sparks in the deck, so there's probably going to be a lot of Sparks. So I kind of want to cut cut down on Bio Essence Hydra because it, you know, gets removed by to Spark without gain, gaining any other kind of value. And we saw that last game that we're having trouble hitting land drops. Like the seven seven flash. What's a seven seven flash? Hey, congratulations there, good brother. Awesome. That is really exciting. Oh, Lockmere Serpent? Oh yeah, no, I don't like that card at all. Definitely a good turn for us. So, you know, Bone Crusher Giant can we get to play that next turn and draw a card? Bone Crusher Giant looking pretty strong there. Looks pretty good. Using a 
I'm a crazy beast. Where do you see my mates? Nature flows with vigor. Ooh, we could potentially have haste Bios and Hydra with Vela Summer next turn. This is just, this is just exactly what we want. No, Domri, Domri. It was gonna be haste and plus seven, because we're like Domri is gonna be able to take up to seven, so it'd been sixteen haste there. Pretty good. The ocean surges, life thrives. But yeah, this this time my opponent stuck on lands. We were stuck last game. They are now. <laughs> I know. Yeah, we're down to number to twenty now. We lost our last goal. We started the day at eleven, and going two and two, we've dropped down to twenty. Hawkeye, he's napping. Yori! Thanks for the Twitch Farm sub there, Yori. I appreciate that. <laughs> GG. All right, we're going to game number three. Bone Crusher Giant looks pretty sweet. Let me play another one. Hmm. If I craft all of uncommons, it counts to the millage. Yes, if you craft the uncommons of the new set before you open up packs, you'll get more points going towards your um, towards your what's it called? Like a towards the chest, whatever that thing's the vault. That's what they call it, the vault. So yeah, you'll get more credit for that. Uh, each uncommon that you open up will help you there. I'm going to play turn one temple. So I could have turn two royal scions. But what am I really doing with turn two Royal Scions? Don't think we're really doing anything. We're like, you know, pay for life. I'll just wait a turn. But then we can um, and we don't have to pay so much life and everything. I lead the way, but my brother knows I have to. Let me synthesize the fact. Hmm. 
I mean, Agent Treachery is kind of the card to discard, but then I, I won't have an Agent of Treachery anymore. I'm not discarding Veil. Veil, I'm keeping Veil. Next turn, I'm going to be playing Oko Veil and like have Veil up. This is risky. Maybe we'd just get rid of a land for now. My answer uh, in the it was risky. Open your heart to the magic that dances around you. Your new look is enchanting. These planeswalkers have so much loyalty. Don't have to worry about Othakaya. At all. To know is to triumph. There's no one talk with. Welcome to the feast. Ugh. Just want to keep on getting more mana for these crises. I wish I had that agent of treachery still. I did not stop this fight, but I will finish it. So we'll be able to attack and kill Sora in this next turn. Then, of course, they get <laughs> Surely you see the humor here. My plan is crystallizing. <clears throat> they get the Othakaya trigger. May death find you quickly. Now I'll be able to minus eight the Royal Scions for the ultimate there, the draw four, and then I and the Royal Scions will still stick a lot stick around as well. Hey, we were just talking about you earlier, Hawkeye. Glad you came up to visit. He's like, what's up, everybody? <laughs> oh, yeah, how can I know he's dreaming? This is in his first stream. We 
fight to finish each other's. What? Attack already? That's a lot of damage. <gasps> a little pick me up before the real fun begins. I kind of have too many cards. Like, it'd be a good time to play Krasis with Haste. But I guess I have too many cards. It's like, that was kind of my plan, which is why I played the Mountain. It's not for you. Trust me. What? You expect me to tuck my tail between my legs? Glad to hear it, Matthew. Glad you're feeling better. <laughs> Fairness? What a bizarre expectation. Aw. The first striking food finishes it off there. All right, so three and two with Teamer. Nothing wrong with that. That's a good, you know, up there in... Hey, we got a, a rare reward card too there. Up there in Mythic, we'll take that. Yeah, we'll crack this little pack here. Real quick. Corset 2020s. It's probably just some gems. Just some gems. Yeah, white white weenie looked kind of tough for sure. And also fires of invention. So could definitely so we can put some we could put some cinder vines in our sideboard and we could have another flame sweep in here as well. Uh, I really liked the ceratops in the sideboard. Um, it doesn't really seem like Chandra, Agent of Treachery. Maybe those aren't necessary. Um and, you know, maybe don't need the extra Bone Crusher Giant. So, like, if that goes for a second Flame Sweep, maybe you just take out Chandra, Agent of Treachery, and play two Cinder Vines. Like, these cards are just really, really good in the late game. You know, in, like, in like mid-range battles there. But maybe that's not what our deck is about. Um, Vela Summer and Negate are both quite good. But, yeah, I was thinking, like, other, like, blue-green decks. Like, we want Agent of Treachery against them maybe we don't need the the chandra i would like to play some cinder vines i i'm not exactly sure how we want to fit all these hit fit a bunch of cinder vines in here though um definitely we'll take out the chandra for one is agent maybe agent treachery is not worth it i don't know it's probably worth it where can we fit another one in? Probably don't need all four lava coils. Maybe we don't need all four lava coils and can get another cinder vines in there. Could also take out a ceratops. You know, I'd, I'd liked them. Um, you know, if, if you don't want to play the... If you if we're playing against more aggro, you're struggling against aggro, you can cut the agent of treachery for another lava coil as well. Um uh, no, this is not a best of one deck for the event too much. I don't I don't think I would recommend this for the event. For that that best of one event. Um but yeah, this this worked out pretty well for us though. I mean, maybe it is it is quite powerful. Like, the Bios and Sidras can be really, really powerful. And then besides that, we have so much haste in here. Really like the haste aspect of our deck. You know, Questing Beast adding on to Spellbreaker. Like, Spellbreaker and Questing Beast is pretty nice. Could probably have, like, 
probably turn this into gruel also. You know, just like you know, get more a lot more aggressive with gruel, um, with spellbreaker, spellbreaker, questing beast, ceratops, that kind of stuff. Um, that's that's a, a kind of another offshoot of this this deck to explore, and then another offshoot of the deck to explore, as we talked about before, is just going a lot more planeswalker heavy, um, even than this, and you know, not have like the the creatures as much. Go more planeswalkers, you know, play other ones like Tamio, Chandra. Uh, things like that. You can play more of these three mana ones and go heavier with Sarkin, Nissa, and maybe go like a Sarkin Planeswalker team or Walker deck is another way to go. Also, um, so there we go. So a lot of cool stuff to explore here. This was pretty awesome though. Royal Scions with Questing Beast looked really impressive. Um, we didn't get to really do Oko stuff till that last game, but. Pretty good looking deck here. Cure was pretty cool. Yeah. All right. So if you're watching the video later on YouTube, like always, please hit the like and subscribe buttons over there. And please leave some comments. Let me know what you liked and didn't like about the deck and uh, everything like that. So thank you so much for watching some Team or Midrange, and I'll see you for the next video.